Good evening. This is the night that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. A warm welcome to each and every one of you. I'd also like to invite all of you to our Christmas Eve service on Saturday night at 6.30. And uh, someone asked, are we going to have church on Christmas? Yes, we will have Christmas church on Christmas. That'll be 9 o'clock on Christmas Day, which is also Sunday. So I would love to see all of you at those services. I think that's all the announcements that I have. Let's share Christ's peace with one another as the bells call us to worship. A reading from 1 John chapter 4, but we'll actually read till verse 21. It's a little longer than what you have in your bulletin. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world, so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he is in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. So we have come to know and to believe that love that God has for us. God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. By this, love perfected with us they, so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment, because as he is, so also are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. We love, because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, whoever loves God must also love his brother. 
O Lord, have mercy on us. Our second reading comes from Isaiah, the fourth chapter. Comfort, comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and hear to her uh, that her warfare is ended and that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken, a voice says, cry. And I said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows on it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God will stand forever. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. We continue with him 350. Holy name of Jesus. Amen. Love. 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 How often do we hear that word, love? We use it so freely, so loosely. We hear it in commercials all the time. Love. It's what makes Subaru a Subaru. Lens crafters. See what you love? Love what you see. And not to mention the long-running campaign from McDonald's, I'm loving it. I even found myself doing just that the other night. I was watching the Packer game. Aaron Rodgers threw a long pass to Jordy Nelson, and I said without thinking about it, I love it. Now, I don't want to burden your conscience and say you can't say that you love things of this earth. But there may be a better way that we can use love. How about for people for whom we have a strong and lasting personal affection? For example, I love my wife, I love my kids, and I love all of you. That's pretty good. That's the love of personal affection. But we can even do better than that. There is the love of Emmanuel. And I don't mean just loving Emmanuel Lutheran Church in school, but what I'm referring to is Emmanuel, which means God with us. Now that is really the best and highest use of the word love. And where and how do we learn of that kind of love? Listen to our text. We love because he first loved us. For if we do not love, it raises the question 
of if we even know God or love God. John continues to write, If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he cannot see, who he has seen, cannot love God for whom he has not seen. In other words, if you say you're a Christian and that you love God, but you do not love your neighbor as yourself, then there's a serious disconnect. And how about you and I? Has your love failed at times? I know mine has. I don't do all that I could for others because I've become too selfish. I don't care for other people as much as I should. Maybe I'm slow to forgive a person who has hurt me. And maybe you are too. And for this, we say sorry. For this is not an Emmanuel kind of love. But love is not always easy. Love can be costly. You can love someone and be in pain. Love can mean extending yourself beyond our comfort zone. It can mean self-sacrifice on behalf of love for another. We are reminded this night, it's because our lack of love that God's love had to intervene. We love because he first loved us. And if we're going to talk about our love for others, we first need to talk about God's love for us. That's how we truly know what love is. That's how we truly experience what love is. That's how we receive so much love that there's so much more to go around that we can freely love one another as Christ has loved us. For it all starts with God's love for us. This Christmas, We can clearly see God's love for us in Christ Jesus. God's love has been made manifest among us for the love of his son, Emmanuel. God sent his only son to be born in a manger so that we might live and love through him. You see, for God's love is not just a feeling. It's love that takes action. God sent his son into the world on a mission that we would live and not die in our sin, but rather that we would live, live with God in a new and restored relationship, live a new life, alive in Christ, alive in the Holy Spirit. That's what God's love is and what it does. So we now know what love is. Through faith in Christ, we know love. And the Holy Spirit works this love in us so that now we, you and I, actually begin to love others as Christ has first loved us. So do you want to know the secret of loving one another? Abide in Christ. Stay connected to him. And if you abide in him, his love will abide in you and produce good fruit. We love because God first loved us. Love, I dare say, also means forgiveness. Think of God's love for us. It's all about forgiveness. It's about reconciliation and restoration. And so it is with our love for one another. Is there a brother, sister, parent, spouse, or child with whom you've been on the outs? It doesn't matter whose fault it is. Love moves us towards that brother or sister in Christ. Love seeks reconciliation. And we can love even when we've been hurt because God first loved us. First comes God's love. Then that bears fruit in our lives so we can learn to love others. I saw this in the Pursuity family. You saw I got a little choked up, right? Because I saw parents who love their kids 
enough to send them to Emmanuel Lutheran School. And the kids loved this school enough, and the Holy Spirit softened their hearts, that they started coming to church. And the girls loved church enough that they kept telling mom and dad, you need to take us to church. And then mom and dad joined the new member class because they figured if the kids are going to go to the Lutheran school, they better learn what they're being taught. And they loved the girls enough to have them baptized. Remember that God sent his son, Jesus, because he loves you very much. He chose you in those waters of baptism tonight because he loves you to pieces. The Beatles once said, all you need is love. There may be some truth to that, but I would tweak it just a bit. All we need is Christ's love. So here's your one takeaway. We love because God first loved us. Be loved. Let us love one another. For love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. And that is you. Yes, you. Believe it. For the love of Emmanuel, you are loved. In the holy name of Jesus, amen.